One of our frequently asked questions is, can we shred lever arch files? And the answer is yes. As of today, there are plenty more questions concerning this document shredding company. Like, why did the health secretary not mention his sister part owned the firm, which won contracts with the NHS? 2019, the year after Matt Hancock became health secretary. Also, the year Top Woodward's placed on a register of potential suppliers to NHS Trust, according to the Health Service Journal. It has won £300,000 worth of business from NHS Wales and has secured contracts with the English NHS. But Mr Hancock never declared any connection to the first of March when he registered he needed 15% of its shares. Today, a government spokesperson said Mr Hancock had, quote, acted entirely properly in these circumstances. Mr Hancock also has no responsibility for NHS Wales. You should obviously disclose that. The, the, the register of interest ministers are supposed to declare not only any conflict of interest, but anything that could be a perception of a conflict of interest. So it seems absolutely cut and dried. But timing is everything, and this has been a bad week for the Conservative Party. Lex Greenhill, Lex, where are you? Give us a wave. The man David Cameron was looking for was Lex Greensill, a man he made a non-official special advisor when Prime Minister, and a man Mr Cameron then worked for and admitted lobbying ministers on behalf of. Today it emerged a second number 10 advisor was hired by Greensill Capital while working for the civil service. Former banker David Briarwood was brought into government in 2014 while David Cameron was prime minister. Just two months later, he became a director at Greensill, a post he held until February this year. There are already seven inquiries into how lobbying is carried out. Today, an eighth. This one by the National Audit Office. This investigation will cover Greensill Capital's involvement in the government's COVID-19 support schemes, including the accreditation process and any post-accreditation monitoring of Greensill Capital's activities. For the government, cronyism and lobbying is fast becoming the story that will not go away. And today's development and the multitude of inquiries ensure it will stay that way. For Labour, well, they've already spent many of the last few months accusing the government of dishing out COVID contracts to firms with political connections, accusations which the government disputes. But coupled with these new revelations, this is a gift for Labour, providing them with an attack line on sleaze, an attack line they hope will resonate with the public. Boris Johnson has vowed to, quote, get to the bottom of the green sill scandal because the risks to his government are real. It's about public confidence. We'll see how damaging it, it is in the, in the long run. But if you look back at some of the um, history of these sorts of scandals, some of them to disappear without trace, and we can't even remember what happened uh, a, a year afterwards. Others live in the memory. I mean, the MP's expenses scandal, for example, or the allegations of sleaze uh, in the major government in the 1990s, um, uh, really kind of got purchase. And what they do uh, in, the, in the longer term is undermine public confidence. Tonight is the deadline for senior civil servants to declare any other jobs outside of government. The reputations of mandarins now joining their ministers under the spotlight. Well, with me now is Lord Bob Kerslake, who was head of the civil service under David Cameron. Lord Kerslake, thanks very much for joining us. There are now eight different inquiries by august government committees, including one ordered by the prime minister himself. But if you're the man or woman on the Clapham omnibus, you don't need an inquiry to tell you this stuff doesn't look good and it doesn't smell good either, does it? No, it's quite extraordinary, uh, as you say, eight inquiries. And I think the perception of the public will be, how does this happen? How can this be allowed to happen? The pervasive influence of Greensill Capital throughout, really, government uh, is, is uh, quite unbelievable. And I think we have to get to the bottom of how this happened and how we can pre prevent it happening uh, in the future. The trust of the, uh, of the country in, the, uh, in our services, in our government, in our civil service is paramount uh, to their effectiveness. And so we cannot allow this to continue. And at the heart of this scandal, um, David Cameron, who was Prime Minister, you were head of the Civil Service when he was Prime Minister, his part in all of this is indicative of this sort of revolving door between politics and private business. What do you make of his involvement? Well, I think he has let himself down, I have to say. Um, 
it's one thing to kind of lobby or approach ministers or civil servants on an issue. Uh, and we all, there are often issues that get raised. But when you're doing it in the way that he did, a sustained campaign uh, on something where apparently he stood to gain or lose uh, £20 million, that's of a different order, uh, I think. And even if he was within the rules, he certainly wasn't within the Nolan principles, the things that should guide the action of everybody in public life. In but that's absolutely the difficulty, isn't it? He insists he did nothing wrong, no rules or code broken. But that's part of the problem, isn't it? That the rules, the code, the principles, nobody's paying any attention to them, are they? Well, look, we do need to tighten up some of these rules. Clearly, uh, the situation when uh, Bill Crothers was able to effectively avoid the so-called appointment regulation uh, rather than uh, go through that. Um, the issue of um, how uh, former prime ministers uh, use their access to lobby on things where they have a financial interest. We've got to look at all of these rules. But what I would say to you is, uh, first of all, we shouldn't assume this is pervasive with civil service. I, my experience is not that. Uh, and I'm sure many civil servants are as horrified as I am about what we're seeing here. Second point I'd make is, however much you redraw the rules, in the end, you can never cover every eventuality. Some of this has to be guided by what is the right thing to do. And just on exactly that point, the story today about Matt Hancock, the health secretary, he's declared he holds shares in a company which won business worth hundreds of thousands of pounds with the NHS in Wales. Downing Street has said it has full confidence in Mr Hancock. Should it have? I think there's something to answer here. Clearly, the rules on declaring interest are you should do it really within a month of uh, taking that interest. And you should do it if there's any question that it might be seen as an interest, not just whether it is an interest. Uh, and I do think there's some questions to answer. It's a different issue. There's no suggestion that he was involved in the actual awarding of contract. But the lack of transparency is a concern. Lord Kerslake, thanks very much for talking to us this evening. Thank you.